I'm able to control the coverage I'm creating and really see what I'm doing. If you linger too long on one area, you're going to get a puddling effect, which is going to work against you. So that gold really creates a beautiful dewy finish to the skin. I want her to look like she just got back from the best vacation. Actually, she did. You want to get the neck too. Now, obviously, how much product you put on the neck is going to depend on what they're wearing and not getting product on your you know, client's clothes. But what starts to happen is, invisibly, the skin starts to become more even. And you just sort of stop when the skin looks beautiful, or you stop when you get the amount of coverage that you're looking for. I'm doing a little bit more in the center of her face. I should have a little bit of redness that I'm going to tone down. You can go fairly close to the under eye, but you don't want to go too close. And you always, as I mentioned, have to be conscious of the air pressure that you're spraying at when you get to those delicate areas of the face. Because Mrs. Jones will tell you she don't like it. I'm sorry, did somebody say something? I do have a question. How long does it take to set before you have to rewrite it? Say that again. How long does it take for the makeup to set before you have to rewrite it in the clothes? You know what? It's very quick. I would say in a minute or so. I would definitely say in a minute or so you don't have to worry about it. It's not, it's, it's, it's very transfer resistant as long as it's set, you know. Now obviously, you know, you have to educate your client and let them know it's still makeup, you know, sitting on the skin. But it, it really becomes one with the skin in a beautiful way. So we laid her basic foundation. Now I'm going to do a little bit of contouring before I actually do blush. I'm going to do contouring, blush, and then a highlighter. So I'm just going to spray out of the last color. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'll turn it down quite a bit lower because you really need to be able to whisper with your color when you're contouring, or they just end up looking like a lion king. You know? Yeah, I know. And she's not trying to look like Mufasa. So you turn the pressure. You turn your pressure down so that it doesn't spray out too fast or too heavy. Part of the word is Hey. Um, you know, I probably have it about halfway as high as it can go. There are no numbered increments on the machine that I'm working with, but you just have to gauge it by what you feel like and what the client feels like on their skin. Okay, so I'm going to create a contour color. There is an actual contour kit that they make um, that has some beautiful colors in it, but I just, I literally just grab, grab a color that I know is going to create the contrast and just mix it with my, you know, mix it with my eye. I'm taking a foundation in a shade eight. She's a, she's a six, which I lighten slightly for her natural skin tone. So I'm going to take eight and start to use that as her contour. So first, I want to make sure that I've sprayed out of the last color. I use a tissue often, just so I can see what's happening. So that's her skin color here. When it starts to get darker, that's her contour color coming out. Okay, so now we're into the contour. Can you see how the color's a bit darker? So I'm going to start on this side and have her turn that way. When you're contouring a cheek, it's important to come out of the hairline. That should be the darkest part of it because that's where the natural shadow is. It needs to get softer as you come in. I'm going to turn it fairly low. I'm going to lift up her baby hair. <laughs> You're still using a very soft circular motion to create it and gently bringing that contour into the face. And it's okay to get that color right inside of their hairline. Can you see how that starts to dimensionalize? 
always just important to use a light hand so you have time to see what's happening if you need to back off a little bit. So that's about what I want for our contour. Now, if you did too much, can you just go back to light again and tend yeah. to correct? You can actually take a sponge and lightly dab over it to soften it and then go back and correct it. The silicone based formula is very forgiving. Now, I haven't jacked her up yet, but I know her from the jack of other people. <laughs> Or at least that's the way I'll tell the story. Now with the silicone base, if she were a bride just to have her wedding, would she have runs or... Well, any time a tear runs over makeup, yeah. you're going to have a trail. Yeah. But this particular formula, like I said, is very forgiving. You can dab it with a wedge sponge and actually patch it up in a way that, that's pretty close to what you originally started with. Water base, if that happens, your show just flopped. Yeah, yeah. Do you just tell the bride, please don't cry? I tell them, suck it up. Suck it up. You know, honestly, like, when they start to tear, I ever have a client pull the Q-tip, not a tissue, because if they have a tissue in their hand, they're going to rub, they're going to rub makeup. Just a regular Q-tip, just press it in the corner, or do that. I swear, it, it goes right back where it came from. <laughs> it goes right back where it came from. And I've gotten some looks when I say, suck it up, suck it up. Well, because water breaks down water base, it's, it's a very matte or dry looking formula, so it's hard to get it to look like supple skin once that's been broken by tears, you know. I'm going to go into her temple. Guys, think about all the places where the sun naturally tans the face first. It's going to be around the edges of the face as opposed to right through the center. Think about a cookie when you take it out of the oven. It's like deeper and more golden on the edges and lighter in the center. She's our cookie. <laughs> She's our cookie girl. So, one thing, I don't know about you guys, but one thing that frustrates me sometimes in the, the marketing of highlighters and bronzers, bronzer's basic purpose is to add neutral warmth to your foundation so that the face looks more healthy. You know, when um, you do foundation and the skin looks a little bit light until you warm it up with blush or bronzer, but you have highlighters, that shimmer being called bronzer, it, it gets confusing. Anybody else get frustrated by that? <laughs> I like to be more strategic about where I'm going to put something that shimmers. Because you want to accent their best features and play with the dimensions of their face. So actually, if, if you give them a couple of angles just so they can kind of see, can you kind of see the dimension of her face? Did you do the center of her chin, or did you just you a tiny bit? Okay. Absolutely, because that's one of those areas where the sun will change your color. Hmm. So we'll definitely have time to do a cheek and another highlight, and I'll even stain her lips with the brush, which I like to do. How long usually yeah. it takes to do the hairbrush? If if I wasn't talking about it, yeah. you know, I could probably. Um, like 10 minutes. You know, if the eyes are done, which I typically do first when I'm going to spray, um, I'll do I'll do eyeshadow, clean up, do concealer, lashes, and then I'll um, spray. So about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It saves you a lot of time. Yeah. And her eyeshadow is done with powder? Yeah, I use traditional. Um, when I'm going to use airbrush as shadow, I'll layer it over traditional because that's going to help get pulled on. No, I choose to do them together. I choose to do them together. So you do the, the traditional first and then airbrush over Exactly. Because oh. you know, whether you're doing a smoky eye or a crease look, which you can do beautifully with airbrush, you want the same longevity. But you have to think about where that skin is. It's a thin skin that tends to be very oily, and it's doing this as you're blinking all day. So in order to support that staying on, you need some powder there. So why not have the powder that's the color of the shadow that you want anyway? And then reinforce it with your airbrush. It actually doesn't require setting, but I'm old school, so I, I don't really feel like I've done it, so I put some powder on it. Like, do you use a regular powder? Um, I'll use a translucent powder. You can use any powder that you that you like. Actually, you know what I'm saying. So it can be a color powder, something metallic color. 
that's just going to make it slightly more matte and keep that look longer. Are the eyeshadows silicone based as well? They are, and there's an amazing color range. Okay, so we're going to do some cheeks on her, some actual cheek color. So I'm going to apply the color right on the apple of her cheek, just angling the gun slightly downward. This is kind of a peachy color. And it has some sheen. Can you guys see that when she turns a little bit? That one is peachy pink. I want to leave the cheek somewhat neutral because we have a really strong eye. But I definitely want it to pop. I'm going to stain her lips with the same color for that image would just be really pretty. Is that okay, Mrs. Jones? <laughs> You gotta ask this to show Where do you have the pressure guidelines? Say again. Where do you have the pressure guidelines? It's it's low. It's real low. Yeah, but I'm As a matter of fact, I'm gonna turn down a little bit lower. You have to kind of feel it out and you know, consult with Mrs. Jones. So this is just hair, but now I'm gonna do color. And it almost looks like a gloss, but it's just not. And the precision of the gun, you know, lets you stay within the lines. Can you guys see that? It's just like a stain. She could leave it like this, guys, or she could put a little bit of gloss on over it. She could do, she could do either, and she would be fine. Does the gloss then make it kind of like how looks like come off normally? Would it do the same thing with the gloss on it? It's, it's the, we've done it before, and it actually stains it pretty well. Um, sometimes I'll put a clear gloss on over it, you know, just after the fact, just because I really like the way it looks, but it stains it pretty well, you know? So now that I've done that, I still have a little bit more of this color in here. So I'll do a little bit of this as eyeshadow for you guys. I've already laid down, as you know, what the predominant color is, so I'm just going to play from it. But I'm going to turn it way more. Yeah, highest when you're doing skin or when you're doing a big area that's not as sensitive as the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of pop her brow bone a little bit with this. Is that pressure feel okay? Is that okay? okay. Just give her a little bit up here. I also love to do it like by the tear duct. I'm going right in here. You know how we love to do that with shadow or traditional shadow? That works beautifully with airbrush too. Did you do her brows with traditional brow stuff or did you do I drew the brows. Um, if I'm going to use silicone base for brows, I'd rather take a thin brush and paint strokes than spray it. Hmm. Brows are probably the part of the face I enjoy doing the absolute most over skin. But they're also over. scary with an airbrush. <laughs> you know, you, you, that takes some practice. Yeah. Um, brows with airbrush, until you're more practiced, you know, can look very editorial. You know what I'm saying? I really love the detail that you see in people's brows. I call it story. I like to make sure that my brows have story. And what I mean by that is that they're a different tone from the head to the tail. You know how the brows are naturally thinner and softer in here, then they get more solid and filled out as you move away from that? I don't like to kill that with product. I don't, I don't want it to look too solid and like a plank. I want it to be delicate looking. Okay. So I'm just doing sort of a C shape right here on top of her cheekbone. and a little bit in her inner corner. I'm 
then I have just enough time to set the areas with powder that I want. Remember, it doesn't require powder. What I'm doing is just being very specific about where I leave sheen. She has sheen all over the face. So what I'm going to do is give her a tiny bit of powder through the center so that all of this pops and catches the light as she kind of moves through space. My favorite powder is called Invisible Difference. Um, Tim2 makes three different shades, and each shade um, is pretty universal. You can deal with a lot of different skin tones with each shade. And for my kit, you know, considering all the things that we have to carry, that works well for me because you know, I love all the stuff that I have, but I can't carry 16 different powders. You know, when you have these jobs and you have multiple people who you haven't seen, you have to have powders that are going to go the distance. This is a very jet milled powder. It's just crushed very finely. And it's a silica based powder, so it has a lot of oil absorption. I love that because it means touch up less. I'm going to take a tiny bit. Just a little. And all I'm going to do is kind of give her a hit through the center of the face. When you control where you have shimmer, those areas become a lot more special. I love the way it looks when it's dewy all over, but when you take it down a little bit through the center, make it a tiny bit more matte, this pops in a way that just looks more special. Does that make sense? So I'm just getting the side of her nose and right through the center of the forehead. So again, the makeup does not require this to set it. It's just a thing that I do to control where she is and where she is not. Is that a Tim2 powder? Mm -hmm. It's called Invisible Difference. There's, shade, there's, there's three shades. There's a one, a two, and a three. Um, this one, it looks virtually like one of those colorless powders. It has a slight beige tint to it. There's no flash bounce from it. Um, it doesn't make the skin look creasy. It doesn't make the skin look dry. It disappears into the skin, and that's important to me. And if you guys want to come closer, or if you want to just take a, a little walk so they can see you closer. Thank you, guys.